Today we are going to learn about one of the most fundamental concepts about neural networks and that is the perceptron which is also called a neuron. So imagine this is the world of shapes and symbols that we have and the task that we want to do is that given a new data point we need to recognize whether it is a pink spiral, a red triangle, a green circle, you know or the snake like S which is a black in color and, and, and so on right. Now let us imagine, let us imagine that uh, you, you, you see this and you see that there is a pattern in, it, in this over here, right? So let us imagine that we get a new data point. Uh, let's say we get a new data point which is somewhere over here. Okay, it's dark black in color. This is a new data point that we get over here. Now, if I were to ask you, what do you think would this data point be? And you would say, huh, looks like all the black uh, S-like snakes are clustered over here in this region. So it, mu it must be a black S-like snake. But it also could be a yellow cross which just ended up being over here. That's true. But given a choice, uh, we would say that it is a black S-like snake. Now, how did you do this? Because you did this because you could see a pattern over here. You saw that all these spirals are clustered over here, all these crosses are clustered over here and so on. Now, what a perceptron does uh, is exactly this. It helps us draw boundaries between different data sets. So a perceptron is just like, a perceptron is generally in popular imagination and drawing is drawn like this. It is said to take in inputs and the inputs over here would be say, uh, this, if this is the y and this is the x coordinate, so we can just draw a coordinate system over here and name these points something. And let us say this is the x and this is the y coordinate. And it, it takes in the inputs and says uh, as the x coordinate is this, the y coordinate is this, and uh, the third input won't be present uh, in this space over here. So let us just, uh, oops, let, we, we'll just ignore it over here. So let us say we have the x and the y inputs over here. And it is just a function which gives out some, some output. And that output is a boundary. So if I were to tell you, what is the boundary? Draw some boundaries over here. And you would say, you know, I would say everything about this line is a green circle, to the left of this line is a green circle, and so on, right? I mean, these are the kind of boundaries that you can draw. Oops, okay. Now, these are the kind of boundaries that you can draw. This is essentially what a perceptron does. Each perceptron is drawing one such boundary. And then we get one data point, and then we say, then we define that everything above this boundary is going to be a snake like S. And then we say this is a snake like S, which is a black in color. So this is what we, uh, this is what the perceptron helps us do. It helps us segregate data. It helps us classify our training data. And then a test data like this black data point comes in. And then we can figure out what its type is going to be. Over here, we have another data set. Uh, which is blue dots and then yellow dots and if I were to tell you draw a boundary over here then very intuitively uh, saying I mean a boundary separating these two you would definitely draw a boundary which goes something like this right I mean there are several possible boundaries which can go over here or go through over here go through over here infinite number of lines even between these two sets there are infinite number of lines that can be drawn but this is somewhat what uh, this is somewhat of a boundary which comes very intuitively to us and this is essentially what i'm going to try and show over here let us say this is the kind of data set that we have and uh, what the perceptron gives us is a perceptron gives us this over here in the left uh, bottom corner you can see an equation a perceptron gives us an equation like this it might start by giving us an equation like this uh, and then say oops it can't really classify the data so it goes and gives us this then it goes and gives us this and then say oh, oh this is the kind of data set that I want to classify but then we say is this the best is this the best that we can achieve and well there are infinite number of lines separating these two over here but we can say the best uh, what we would like to have the best boundary 
for us will be uh, mm, yes one which is equidistant from these two so maybe it is something like this aha that's wonderful so we end up with a boundary like this now let us try and see how these things play out in a neural network this is a playground of tensorflow now uh, i'm just going to okay let us say we have uh, two data sets exactly like what we saw over here and now i'm going to try and find th these are the two inputs x1 and x2 and now i'm with a perceptron over here with a neuron over here i'm going to try and see if we can find a classifying boundary like this we can look intuitively we can say it is going to be like this over here and I, i've said the learning rate to be very low we can we'll be talking about the learning rate later but i've said it to be very low so you can see it happening in real time the the corrections happening in real time you see it is it, it can see i'm not classifying it very well i'm not classifying it very well and now it ends up somewhere it is it is going somewhere right it is trying to improve itself it has already separated uh, the two data sets is it pausing maybe it is it has already paused because it has reached a solution it has, it, it now can say that i have separated these two data sets now let's just pause this uh, and create uh, and just increase the learning rate and make it 0.03 look from 0.0001 to 0.03 and maybe we will get a very different separating line over now aha is it different i think it's different it is more it is more concrete it is more sure about what it is doing let us just change it to say 1 and do it again ah it's it's still a bit different maybe so essentially what we are seeing is that with one perceptron we can draw one line remember this every perceptron draws one line if it is a three dimensional space it draws a plane so essentially it is separating it is separating the data set it is separating uh, or drawing a boundary in the space in which our data resides so thank you in our next video we are going to see uh, how perceptrons divide and classify a lot more complicated data sets which are not easily divisible or classifiable like this data set and then we are also going to learn something very interesting about expanding the the input space and covers theorem and how how it all relates biologically to our eye so it is very very interesting times coming up stay tuned let's meet you in the next video thank you